Docker offers a variety of networking options that facilitate communication between containers and the external environment. Your choice of networking type depends on your specific use case and requirements. In this video, we'll explore bridge networks, which are suitable for most applications. I will demonstrate how containers communicate within a bridge network. We'll cover topics such as user-defined bridges, DNS resolution, and attaching a container to multiple networks. Additionally, I will explain why using the default bridge network may not be the best choice for production workloads. I'm Philip. let's dive right in. Docker relies very heavily on some of the core Linux features like networking namespaces, Ethernet pairs, and bridges. If you are not familiar with those concepts, please check my video on that topic. Okay, when you install Docker for the first time, you are presented with three networks. I will list them with Docker Network LS. First one is the default bridge network, then we have a host network, and non-network. Host network allows you to attach your container to the same network as your host. Non-network simply runs your container only with a loopback interface. Let me show you how two different containers can talk to each other on the same host. First, let's see the list of interfaces that we have available. Have you noticed the Docker Zero interface? It's a bridge. What Docker does in its default configuration is set up a bridge named Docker0 and assign an IP address from 172.17/16 network. It will then use that bridge to communicate between containers and the host network. Let me start a container. I will be using Alpine Linux. That's a popular choice for containerized applications. Docker run starts the container. Dash IT option tells Docker to enter interactive mode and allocate sudo terminal. Dash D option will run the container in the background in detached mode. Then we give a container a name, provide the image and command to run. The container is now running. If we list the host interfaces, there is a new interface VETH that belongs to the virtual Ethernet pair. On one side, it's part of the Docker Zero bridge, on the other side, it's connected to Alpine One container. Basically, traffic entering the ETH0 interface in the container goes to the VETH interface on the host that in turn enter Docker Zero bridge. Let's start one more Alpine container. First, I will detach from this container. If you'd press Ctrl C, you'd stop the container. In order to leave the container running, you need to press Ctrl P followed by Ctrl Q. I will run the same docker run command, but this time enter Alpine2 as the container name. If we list the interfaces on the host, we'll discover one more VTH interface that belongs to yet another virtual Ethernet pair. One end of the VTH pair is connected to the docker bridge and one on the other end is connected to Alpine 2 container. Let me draw that. At the top, we have an Alpine 1 container. In the middle, we have our host. And at the bottom, we have Alpine 2 container. ETH0 from Alpine 1 container is connected to VETH3 on the host, as those two interfaces for virtual Ethernet pair. VETH3 and VETH5 are connected as they are both part of the same bridge. Finally, VETH5 and ETH0 on the Alpine 2 are also connected as those two interfaces form virtual Ethernet pair. With that said, Alpine 1 and Alpine 2, despite being in separate containers, can talk to each other as they are part of the same layer 2 domain and belong to the same 172.17/16 network. Before testing the connection, I will start a traffic dump on the Docker Zero bridge. I will go to Alpine 1 container and try pinging Alpine 2. Connection between Alpine 1 and Alpine 2 works. Moreover, we see the traffic on the Docker Zero bridge. 
few important things to mention. Every container has its own networking namespace. Remember that uh, networking namespaces provide complete network isolation so that processes have their own network interfaces, IP addresses, routing tables, and firewall rules. We can list all the namespaces with ls ns command and then perform ns enter to get into a particular process namespace. Dash n option tells ns enter to go into the network namespace of target PID specified by dash t. To prove that we are inside the Alpine 1 networking namespace, I will show you its IP. Next thing to mention is that each container gets its own private IP address within the bridge network assigned from 172.17/16 network. We can inspect the bridge with docker network inspect command. It will reveal the subnet that was assigned. This command will also list all the containers connected to our bridge network along with their IP addresses. There's the container name, its IP and MAC address. If we stop a container, both VTH pair and networking namespace will be removed and the IP address will be deallocated. Let's list the interfaces of the host. Now show which interfaces are part of our Docker Zero bridge and display networking namespaces. I will stop the Alpine 1 container simply by doing docker attach and pressing Ctrl D. If we check the interfaces again or check the docker bridge, the interface is gone. The namespace is also gone. Long story short, for every container, docker creates a new networking namespace, virtual ethernet pair, adds one interface from the pair to the bridge on the host network and puts the other interface from the pair inside the container's namespace. The question is, how does one container knows the IP address of another container? Usually, you run more than one container on a host and often containers need to talk to each other. One container could be a database and another could be an application server. Both containers working together to form an application. We don't want to manually reconfigure the application every time the IP address of the database changes. To solve this issue, Docker provides automatic DNS resolution between containers. Although this feature is not available in the default bridge, we need to create a new user-defined bridge. Let's run docker network create and specify the driver type as bridge and provide the network name. If we list the networks with docker network ls, the newly created network should be there. New bridge interface was automatically created as well. This new network has a different network range than the default network. Let me start two new containers, Alpine 3 and Alpine 4. Notice the dash dash network parameter. It specifies which network the container should be connected to. Let me attach to Alpine 3 container. I can call other containers by name. It can be done because in user-defined bridge, Docker is using its own DNS resolver. Versus in default bridge, it's passing the DNS from the host. Thanks to automatic DNS resolution, we can configure our application container to reference our database container by name. So no matter what's the actual IP of the database, it will always resolve correctly. We no longer have to reconfigure our application every time we recreate the database container. Just to have DNS resolution between containers is a good enough reason for you to start using it. Additionally, user-defined bridges give you few features required for running your production workloads. First of all, if you want to isolate sets of containers, you can put them in a separate bridge network so that containers from one application will be able to talk to each other, but not to the containers from the other application. This gives you better isolation and segregation. Unless you explicitly expose a service, the communication won't be allowed. Moreover, Custom Bridge Network allows you to specify the network range like this. 
thanks to that, you can feed your private Docker network into your company's network without causing a clash. There is one more thing I'd like to show you in regards to Docker networks. You can have more than one network attached to your container, allowing your applications to access workloads running in separate networks or build more complex networking topologies. Let's list our available networks. Let's start Alpine 5 container in MyNet2 network and attach MyNet2 network to Alpine 4 container. Now the Alpine 4 container is connected to both MyNet and MyNet2 networks. It has two network interfaces, one in each network. Moreover, you can use DNS name for both networks. Let me ping Alpine 3 container that's in MyNet and ping Alpine 5 container that's in MyNet 2. We've seen the basics of Docker bridge networking within a standalone node. In my next video, I will show you how a container can communicate with the external world and also what happens when you expose a service aka publish container port to the host.